Hi everybody, thank you for joining our Facebook Live video today. Today I'm joined by Chris White from Aspiring Solicitors and we're going to be talking to you about diversity and inclusion in law firms and how Aspiring Solicitors as an organisation might be able to help you succeed in your career in law. So I'll get to that in a second, but if you haven't met me, I'm Sam Hope and I'm the Graduate Recruitment Manager at Shoesmiths and we um, do partner with Aspiring Solicitors um, and we have done for a couple of years now. So we always start our videos with a question and today I want to know where did you hear about this video um, from? So was it perhaps on Facebook, from your university tutor, the Aspiring Solicitors Instagram? Um, just type a comment in and let us know where you heard about us. Um, so Chris, there's so much information online now, it's a lot easier to find out about online webinars and events and information online, so much more so than, say, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. but where does Aspiring Solicitors share its information to candidates? Um, we share information through social media, um, through our Twitter account, LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook. We also share information on our website, aspiringsolicitors.co.uk, and we have an amazing team of campus ambassadors as well. Um, that our members and prospective members can, can get information from as well. So um, lots of different places available to find out about us. Okay, great. So we've shared some of the links already on our website um, and on Facebook today, but we'll make sure we share those links so candidates can follow through and um, have, uh, have a look at a bit more information after this video. Um, so before I um, get on to asking Chris to introduce himself and tell us a little bit more about AS, um, I'd like you just to tag a friend or a, co a colleague in the comments who you think should be watching this today. Um, and sharing is caring, so just go ahead and tag somebody who should be watching now. If they're not available to watch now, it's okay because we um, post this video onto Facebook after the broadcast and also onto YouTube. So they will be able to come back and watch later. Um, so, Chris, would you like to introduce yourself to us, please? Sure. Um, so, yeah, Chris White, founder of Aspiring Sisters. I was a lawyer before I set up AS, worked for um, a large international law firm and trained at a big US law firm as well. Um, but I'm from a pretty normal, average background. Um, family were working class. Dad was a builder. Mum worked at Marks and Spencers. I went to a non-Russell group uni. Uh, I uh, didn't have lots of opportunities when I was younger. And yeah, I, I managed to, to get my dream role uh, as, a, as a lawyer. And five years on, AS has been set up and is thriving as a, the largest platform for uh, aspiring solicitors in the legal profession from diverse groups. So um, yeah, there's, there's a lot more I could say, um, but I'll keep it nice and short for once uh, <laughs> uh, in answering that question. Um, so you started five years ago with mm -hmm. uh, started a, uh, aspiring solicitors, and it was just from a Facebook page that you started, right, yeah. and it just grew overnight almost. I think in the first month you said that um, you had a huge number of students who were really interested in finding out more about how they could get into a career in law and how you might be able to help them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that we first met in your first year of running AS when you were running events with the law school. And we actually met candidates that we were really impressed with the calibre. Um, the content that you were delivering in terms of the coaching service was really impressive as well. And we thought this is, this is an organisation that really shares our values and that we want to work with long term. Um, and some, one of the students that we met at our very first event where we met you, she now works for us as a second year trainee in our Birmingham office. So it's really nice to have seen her grow from right at that first point um, to where she is now. Um, so now you're running events with BPP called Head Start and they're um, great workshops where candidates can really get some skills, some commercial awareness and find out a bit more about firms as well as partnering with firms to run events and you mentioned your campus, campus ambassadors and professional ambassadors on the website as well. Um, so there's loads going on, but for a student that wants to know who, who's it for um, and what do they have to do to get involved, where do they go? So that's a really good question. Um, Aspiring Solicitors is for individuals that are looking to enter the legal um, profession that are underrepresented. We are a diversity platform, make no 
mistake about that. And we are four candidates who are black, Asian, minority, ethnic, who are from a lower socioeconomic background, or, you know, people refer to that as socially mobile, um, and there's a number of characteristics to that. Individuals that are from the LGBT plus community and individuals that have disabilities and long-term health conditions. AS is for you and, and we're trying all, all we can to raise the bar of the profession and we know that people from all of those categories you know, should be getting into the legal profession. Historically that hasn't happened as it should have done but you know firms are recognising those errors now you know, in the past and are really pushing forward with getting the best people into the job. Okay, and what about law firms or businesses with in-house legal teams? How can they work with AS and what would the benefits be to them? So this is a, a huge development in the last few years. Corporates, in-house legal teams, Barclays were a founder member, we now work with uh, Shell, we work with um, ASOS more recently, which is a great, great new brand to, to add to our uh, portfolio. Candidates can benefit from work experiences, from mentoring schemes. Um, in terms of law firms, yeah, they can also benefit from mentoring schemes we run with our partner law firms. They can come to our events, they can get involved in the commercial awareness competition, supported by law firms. Um, there's so many opportunities. It's just, it's, it's, it's just great that we have that many opportunities for our members. I guess one of the benefits of us being a um, partner with aspiring solicitors is that we get the chance to really drive our diversity message forward and, and share, share with people what it is that we're trying to achieve. So being able to reach the talented students through aspiring solicitors and then develop them in terms of the workshops and events that we run and get our message out there is obviously really important. Um, we're really lucky at Shoesmith that we've been... Um, ahead of the game I guess on a lot of diversity initiatives mm -hmm. <clears throat> in recent years and of course there's still loads more that everybody can be doing um, but we've been running CV blind and our graduate assessment days for a long time now um, and so I, I feel very lucky to work in a firm where diversity and inclusion is, is really valued and is really promoted mm -hmm. but what about a law firm where or, or anybody that says to you well only good students come from Russell Group universities. What would you say to them? They're lying. Um, yeah, the Russell Group universities do have some amazing candidates um, that academically have met a certain threshold. But what I can promise you, uh, and you know this, Sam, I know, uh, is that there are amazing candidates at non Russell Group universities for a whole host of reasons, whether it be because they you know, want to stay close to home and that university that's close to home is a non-Russell group, whether it's you know, because of caring responsibilities or whatever it may be, the best candidates aren't just at the Russell group universities. Um, what AS is about is ensuring we're fishing in an ocean rather than a pond. And again, historically, um, law firms have fished in a pond and as a consequence, you know, that they haven't got had access to the best candidates out there. Um, I could go on about that, given I'm from a non-Russell Group <laughs> university myself, um, but the reality is this is about getting the best people for the job. And it isn't just about the Russell Group. Brilliant, if you've got into Russell Group, no, no, not discrediting that achievement, but firms are now recognising and you know, quickly the, the best candidates all over the place. Yeah, <clears throat> and for us it's about definitely widening that pool of talent that we're fishing in, like, um, like you say, and making sure that we're looking at every um, alley and avenue that we can to find the best talent that's out there. Um, so we ran an event in our Manchester office in, in partnership with AS on Friday and we had around 30 AS members come along. It was a really, really good event. I loved running it. Um, but I think the thing that I really enjoyed actually was the end. Um, but only because I saw how energised and happy the students were when they left. And that really made me feel like I'd done a good job on Friday to have inspired them to um, know that they can achieve and they can set themselves goals and they can succeed in a career in law. Um, so if you haven't been able to apply to attend a AS event, we do run insight evenings at Shearsmiths as well. And that's another way that you can get to meet us and find out a bit more about um, our commitment to diversity and also um, 
what we can offer you in terms of training contracts. So do have a look on our website and the applications are open now for Insight Evenings. The deadline is the 30th of November. I'll make sure I share the link after this video. Um, so I think sometimes when you're in working in a good environment, it's really hard to think that discrimination is actually happening elsewhere. And um, so what if a student feels like they've been treated unfairly in a recruitment process? What should they do? Um, straight away, I would encourage a student to contact aspiring solicitors, particularly if that experience is um, with a partner firm that, w that we work with. Um, it's happened a couple of times uh, and it's really essential for me personally and also for the organisation to ensure that you know, we get to the bottom of that on an anonymous or, or otherwise basis. Um, more broadly, I would encourage a candidate um, to recognise that if they've been treated differently because of um, a characteristic which you know, is in, in the Equalities Act um, or otherwise actually, um, to speak out about it. Um, there's a lot in the news about you know, speaking out about inequality at the moment, and rightfully so, because the more people that speak out about it, the less it's going to happen going forward. So um, call it out. If it's one of our partner firms, I'd like to know about it, and you can contact us on that through the website. Yeah, and I think, um, I'm sure any partner firm would be really upset to hear that something like that happened mm. as well. So it's great that actually you do raise it to make sure that these things aren't happening and that they're being picked up in, in that process. For sure, and, and you know, I know the reason why I could say that, that we want to know about it, is I know that our partner organisations would want to know about it, and our contacts in those firms would be horrified that that, that had happened or that there was an issue there. So um, that's the strength of the relationship that we have with our partner firms that we have that ability to, to reach out to them on that. Hopefully you don't get too many calls on that, Chris. Never, ne never <laughs> had any from shoes with today. Good. Um, so I was at Nottingham Law Fair on Monday and um, I was just taking a, a moment just to check my emails behind the stand while it was quiet at the fair and I overheard a uh, student there saying to her friends that every law firm she'd been and spoken to at the law fair that day had advised her to be herself and to, um, so they say, be yourself. Um, and she said, but what does that mean? And she was just saying to her friends how frustrating it was because we were all saying the same thing, but she didn't really know how that would translate into standing out on an application form. So how can a candidate demonstrate being themselves on an application form or, or at an assessment centre? Well, we, we have this question a lot as well. Um, and my response to that, is how many of you are there in the world and the reality is there's just one of you um, and demonstrating or being yourself is about being proud of who you are as an individual and recognizing that all of your experiences both pos positive and negative have made you who you are today and drawing on those positive and negative experiences is exactly what a law firm wants to see and that's how you stand out and that might be volunteering at a local mosque one day a week, or it might be working four nights a week um, at a bar or a nightclub to fund your university degree because you haven't got the money to do so otherwise. Or it might be you know, going in and caring at a local hospice for, for somebody uh, or, or for patients. It's, there's certain skills and transferable skills that I've just mentioned involved in those examples that law firms want to see in their applicants. They don't want to see you know, uh, cookie cutter applicants. They want to see people that can add value and liaise and link in with their clients and, and deliver that amazing service um, that, that, that they you know, are instructed to deliver. And I think um, it is hard at law fairs because candidates are seeing law firms that are, are trying to show their best, their best selves mm -hmm. to the candidates and encourage you to apply to us. Um, so there's definitely benefit to you trying to get to know law firms on a bit more of a personal basis at events and getting a bit more um, out of them about the application form and what they're expecting to see. I guess it comes down to the candidate having a really genuine interest mm -hmm. in those things rather than just becoming part of the law society so they can tick that box on the application form. Yeah, and, and you know, a great way for candidates to do that and have form that genuine interest and, and um, you know, that, that you can't get anywhere else really other than meeting somebody is the Professional Ambassadors platform for AS, which is why it's so unique. You know, on the Member Services tab on the website, contact a legal professional 
you have the option of searching by diversity or searching by firm uh, and you know, it's so underutilized um, in terms of people contacting those individuals but it's a great platform to ask why why do you want to work at Shoesmiths or what is the culture like at Shoesmiths really and ask different people that are professional masters and get that insight mm. no law firm is going to you know provide literature and in a, in a brochure or, or a third-party website that is saying anything negative about them so use your ability and, and the services available to you through the professional ambassador network and at law fairs to really ask those probing questions and develop that genuine desire to want to work mm. as Sam said. So um, Chris has mentioned professional ambassadors and that's an area on the AS website where you can contact specific people within each of the partner uh, or member law firms. So we have uh, I think around 12 people that work at Shoesmiths that you can contact through that website and it's just a case of clicking through, reading the profile and then being able to send a message and start some communication. So it's a really good way to speak to our trainees on a bit more one-to-one -one basis than you might get at Law Fair or another event. Um, but we've got trainees, solicitors, um, a range of people on there. So yeah. really good way to engage with AS and firms. Um, so a little bit of a personal question now, Chris. Um, so when you started AS as a startup five years ago, that must have been quite tough going from uh, moving from a law firm um, into doing something very different um, and a big pressure on your personal life in terms of how quickly AS has grown. So what do you do personally to make sure that you strike a good work-life balance? Um, well, it's, firstly, it's not easy. Um, you know, historically... I didn't really have much of a work-life balance um, when I was setting up AS because I was so passionate about it, I didn't recognise it as work. So I would do it at all times of the day and in the evening. And one of your previous trainees actually recalls the time when I was on the phone speaking to them at 11 o'clock because they had a, to prep for their Shoesmiths interview. Um, yeah, that's difficult, but it's essential to have time off and to not be... Um, working around the clock and you know corporate lawyers aren't the best at sticking to that principle and I haven't been but thankfully I've now been um, blessed with meeting a, a fiance of mine uh, that I have now uh, Michelle who tells me you have to stop working um, that laptop's not going on that phone's not being answered um, and she's doing that for my best interests um, so in doing that I, I get time off I also have two lovely uh, niece and nephews, uh, twin niece and nephews, um, who I try to see as much as I can. Very close to the family, um, my parents, um, brother and, and extended family. Uh, and it's really important to have time with friends. So this weekend I'm um, seeing them, hopefully you know, a couple of times. So it's, it's difficult because the buck does stop with you. Mm. And when there's you know, problems or when there's issues in the organisation, um, and there, there will be, and have been, um, you've got to deal with them. But yeah, you know, it's a big thing for us now and within the organisation, sustainability and um, you know, being able to, to progress in a sustainable way is essential because you know, I haven't been very good at uh, doing that in the past. Yeah, and there's a huge amount of information out there about wellbeing at the moment, especially it's something that we're doing a lot of um, at Shoesmiths. Mm -hmm. um, I went or I had a resilience day of, of training in the Birmingham office last week, which was really useful in just thinking about stepping back and taking the time to look after yourself at the same time as being able to juggle work and home. So um, I think that's a really good message for students to know that it can be a really pressurised time when they're trying to finish their studies, they're trying to apply for training contracts, go to events, meet law firms, go to law fairs, read the blogs, there's so much for you to do, but then also, um, you know, have a life at the same time. Well, we've also, just on that point, and it'd be great if you want to come along to this, Sam, I haven't mentioned this yet, we've got a, an event on the 5th of December in our you know, London office, um, which is around thriving, and it's about well-being, and there's going to be some really senior... Um, in-house counsel sharing their experiences of mental health and well-being fundamental um, for, for any aspiring sister to, to be aware of it and conscious of that because it is very easy to ignore that mm. um, so you'll find out more about um, the uh, the thriving event on the on the 5th of December 
um, on our website and social media soon. Perfect, that sounds good. Um, and you ha you heard it here first. You did. Um, so, thinking about um, your role with AS and, and the team that you've now grown and the business that you've grown and all the travelling that you do because you um, work with partner firms all up and down the country, um, but it would be easy to, to have a duvet day, but what is it that keeps you coming to work at AS every single day? I can't remember the last time I had a duvet day, <laughs> um, but, but um, in answer to your question, it's quite simple, really. Twofold. One is being able to directly impact and influence not just an individual's lives, but their family's lives. The number of people that we've helped who have contacted me and our brilliant team and said that you've helped change my life and my family's life is significant. And it never gets old. It, it's always as amazing you know, as it ever has been. The second part linked to that is knowing that the people we're helping are then going to influence and impact other people's lives in the future. And as a consequence of that, being able to change and, and have a positive impact on one of the oldest professions in the world for the better is a, an amazing concept. And that's why I will continue to do this in a personal capacity to whatever degree for the rest of my life because I love what I do. Uh, and everybody within the team, and we have an amazing team at, at AS, um, past and present um, are equally as committed and passionate about those objectives. I think one of my favourite things about following aspiring solicitors on social media actually and on LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram is that when you receive a, a thank you email uh, from a candidate who has succeeded and been offered that training contract you might have been working with them for a long period of time in terms of coaching and events and CV management um, their, their emails are so are so gushing with um, thanks for you and the team, and it's it's actually really lovely to read that you've you've helped those candidates get to that point. Um, so that's yeah, I love seeing those. It's great, and you know, we could post a lot more. Um, I'm conscious of not posting them every day because they probably wouldn't be as impactful. But you know, certainly historically the. the the messages that Gemma and I and, and, and others in the team have had, we're just so excited to have been able to share them uh, and show people what it means. And mm -hmm. interestingly, I had a, I was at um, an event with a qualified lawyer who came up to me a few months ago and, and they didn't I don't think they really got AS um, and what we do. They said, well, can you tell the people that are posting these, um, these success stories or these emails to tone it down a bit? I said, <laughs> what? People have just had their lives changed and you want them to tone down the thanks that they're expressing to us for being part of that? <laughs> Definitely not. Um, so I just thought it was, a, it was kind of strange that somebody might say that. Obviously shows that they didn't understand uh, or come from the backgrounds that you know, our target audience are mm. from. Um, but yeah, it's just an interesting, uh, yeah. interesting observation. Definitely shows that we're on the same wavelength then. <laughs> yeah. um, so if you'd like to ask Chris or myself any questions, then now is a good time to do it. So all you need to do is just type your question into the comments um, and we will answer those for you. There's always a little bit of a delay in the questions coming through. So do type them in now and we'll answer them in a second. And we'd love to hear your advice and thoughts if you've got any advice or you've been through a similar experience to what we've been talking about. Um, but before we get onto that, Chris, do you have any questions that you'd like to ask me about Shoesmiths? There's loads. Um, I've asked many in the past, but for the purposes of this um, Facebook Live um, session, I'd like to understand what Shoesmiths gains, or what you feel Shoesmiths gains, what added value Shoesmiths gains from hiring the best of our talent. Mm. Um, so I think for us, We've, um, we have that culture already in the firm where we're very inclusive and very accepting of everybody's differences, no matter uh, what their background or what their role is or which office they work in and at what, what level of role. And we talk quite often about having uh, not having a hierarchy in the firm. So that, that really does um, show the type of culture that we have. So I think, firstly, I'm very lucky to be in that culture where... 
um, it's already accepted that this is just part of our business, mm -hmm. that we recruit in a diverse way, that we accept people for who they are, and then when they join us, of course, it's not just about the recruitment, but about making sure that everything to do with the empl employment life cycle mm -hmm. or employee life cycle is um, managed in a fair way. So gender equality, and it's been talked about a lot recently, especially with the gender pay gap data information that needed to be submitted earlier in the year. And um, we were the first law firm to submit our information, which we were proud of because um, we were really committed to making sure that we're open and transparent about what we're doing in the law firm um, and in the legal sector. And I think that we do benchmark quite well against the rest of the sector, but of course there's, there's always more. Um, so for me personally, driving forward um, initiatives and working with AS adds value because we're able to represent our communities yeah. with the lawyers or the lawyers of the future that we're recruiting. Um, and we, ha we have to be representative of the communities. Why, why wouldn't we? It makes business sense. Um, it is better for business. It is said to um, you know, actually create more successful businesses from being like that. So I think um, there's many reasons. One, I think that is particularly important but not talked about all that often actually is that by having a vis being a firm with visible diverse um, people only attracts more diverse people so I think if you're um, you're looking at a business that doesn't seem all that diverse and you, you might not be attracted to apply there and of course they've got to start somewhere and I think working with AS is a great way for firms to start um, building that diversity strategy um, if they haven't done so already, but yeah, for us, we already feel like we had it in place, but building upon what we already have, so important. And I, I couldn't agree with you more, and, and I know, you know, for everybody's benefit, that, that is a, that's a genuine statement, um, by virtue of the fact that people that I know you've hired, that have come through AS, that you've hired, you've got some superstars that you know, you've, you've brought into the Shoesmiths team, and yeah, it is that why wouldn't we hire them? You know, why, 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 why wouldn't we offer somebody an opportunity that is amazing? Mm. You know, it isn't really an issue for Shoesmiths and um, I can also you know, provide confirmation of that given the friends that I have, have that have worked there and that continue to take positions um, with you. So I think it's brilliant and I think it's great what that you're so committed to it on an individual level as well as an organisational level. Mm. Uh, it really shines through in, in all of your comms and, and feedback from students. Yeah, I think, um, and we mentioned it earlier in the video, but it's about recruiting the right and the best talent. Mm. And just because the best talent might come from a different background or might come from a different university, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to us. If it's the best talent, they'll get through. And, and why should it? Yeah. Why, why, why would it matter? You know, just because you could put... Uh, particular university on a bio on the website what, what does that what difference does that make if they're not the best person for the job mm. or you know, who cares about the color of someone's skin if they are the best person for the job shouldn't matter uh, and, and doesn't matter um, entirely um, well, another question that I have is uh, there's lots of law firms out there um, and we work with some of your competitors why would you say that individuals watching this video should apply to Shoesmiths, individuals that are diverse from one of the four core focus groups that I mentioned, why should they apply to Shoesmiths over those other firms? Yeah, so, um, so and this is a question that obviously candidates ask us all the time, um, which is why, why should they apply to us? We ask you as well, so we ask you on our application, why do you want to apply to us? Um, and I think that Shoesmiths does offer something different. And from the number of events that I've run and the number of partners and solicitors that I've seen speak at our events and talk about their own experiences of working in other firms and then coming to Shoesmiths, all of them say Shoesmiths has something different. And I think that you perhaps wouldn't ever appreciate that until you'd maybe worked somewhere else first, because how would you ever compare? But that's why I think events are so important for candidates to go along to and really get to know the people and the firm, the culture, the type of work. 
So Shoes and Miss is um, talked about as, an, as a regional firm, so we're a national, regional, commercial firm, um, which is true, and we're in our London office today filming, but we don't um, actually recruit trainees into our London office. It's um, a fairly small office in comparison to our, to our other offices. So it's not a case of all the work comes into London and then gets farmed out to the regions. And, and you hear that talked about a lot when you hear about regional firms. And um, every office is its own distinct office. And we all share a culture of the firm, but um, every office has experts in law and in their specialty areas. And every one of them can provide really amazing um, supervision for our trainees and training. Amazing offices as well. You just need to look oh, at some okay. photos of Manchester and Birmingham. Manchester's my favorite, um, I must say. It's, um, it's like futuristic. Uh, I would love to have had the opportunity to work somewhere like yeah, that. Yeah, it's and amazing. If you're, if you're in Manchester or you want to work in Manchester, you should definitely be trying to get into that office. Yeah, it's, um, it really is lovely. And it's, it's set up for agile, flexible working, um, for uh, very much a collaborative style of working, all open plan, but loads of meeting areas. And you, just take your, you can just take your phone, your iPad, your laptop in, and you can just cast straight to the TVs. So you can all be watching the same types of presentations, if that's what you're talking about like it's a really great way of working and again that really feeds into the culture that we um, deliver uh, across the whole firm um, so so why us amazing clients um, just because we're uh, we're not head office in London doesn't mean we don't have the best clients um, the best work to work on and overall though wh whoever you ever ask at Shea Smith why why Shea Smith they will always say the people. Mm -hmm. The people, you spend so much time with them every day in your job, you have to get along with them, you have to like them and everybody's likeable, everybody's approachable and everybody's really motivational. So my personal reason is that I really value that I am given the opportunity to develop in things that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And if you've got an idea, you can put it forward and you can run with it. Um, can you give us an example? Yeah. So I guess Facebook Live is a really good example of this. So um, Danny, um, who's uh, head of recruitment and I had this conversation um, quite a number of years ago now, around probably about four years ago, about how we were interested in doing some really relaxed uh, video interviews where we could share information with people online because we want to widen that, that pool that we're reaching rather than just the events that we get to. Um, and with the busyness of graduate recruitment, it, it we didn't get it off the ground and we didn't finalise our ideas and then I went off for a year and had a baby. So when I came back, I came back fresh, ready, um, motivated to crack on with this idea that I've been thinking about. And we, we love doing it. We love speaking to our guests that we've had on the videos. We've been um, learning so much ourselves, mm. as well as being able to share that information. So, and the firm and our business development team said, yeah, you like the idea, you want to run it, you go ahead. Brilliant. Um, and I just think that supportive environment is just, one other, one other thing about our culture that makes us inclusive. And I think that it's important for aspiring solicitors that are watching this to recognise the, the, how essential that support is. As a junior lawyer, people say, oh, I'm applying to a firm for you know, the profit per equity partner or the you know, international succumbent or whatever it may be, but actually you're applying to a firm to train. And having a supportive environment and culture as a junior speaking from experience is essential mm. and do not underestimate that and, and hearing Sam identify that as you know, a key feature of the firm is really powerful and um, it's great to hear. Yeah, thank you. Um, so let's have a, a just a look and see if we've got any um, questions that have come on um, to the video now. So if you've got a question, if you want to type it into the comments and I'm just going to double check and see if there are any questions. Um, let's have a look. So, um, Sandra has asked, um, could AS organise events for AS members to meet in order to share experience, uh, experiences, make contacts and learn from each other? Good question. Um, and in short, yes. We, we have flagship diversity events that we run um, throughout the year. There's a couple coming up. Uh, one... The AS Social Mobility event, um, that's at Bristow's, the AS Pride event at Clyde & Co and with Reed Smith, and then uh, AS Ability and 
Women in Law event, which is going to be announced shortly, that those events have 100, you know, 150 to 100 plus AS members where you can meet and speak with each other um, and network with each other. Um, we it takes a lot of organisation uh, and events, a huge amount of organisation and finding somewhere to host those events. But I like the idea of that. I like the, the thought of people interacting and sharing ideas and experiences. Um, so I will take that away and, and, and have a chat to the team and, and see what they think uh, around the, the, uh, just a generic event, I suppose. Yeah, so you have um, great uh, Facebook communities, don't you, for mm. different AS members from different universities and things That's like that. Right. So that would be also be a great area where people could um, collaborate and chat online. Yeah, and, and speak with campus ambassadors. I don't know, Sandra, if you're, if you're at university, if you're a grad or, or otherwise, but... Um, you know, reach out to your campus ambassador and, and you know, I've got an amazing uh, universities officer now, Charles, who's actually, I think, on, at SOAS as we speak, um, who's going around the country with Alison um, and Gemma Cowley um, in the Bristol and, and UE region um, that yeah, would love to be able to speak with you and, and facilitate that type of exchange. So yeah, reach out to your campus ambassadors and, and, and come to our flagship events. That would be my, my best advice at, at, as it stands. So Sandra has also asked um, how important are grades for AS partner firms? So if I answer from the point of view of Shoesmith, so our minimum uh, grades to apply for a training contract at Shoesmith are uh, three C's at A-level or equivalent and also any degree. So um, we, we don't you know stipulate a minimum of, of 2 1 or anything so um we we've done that on purpose a few years ago we changed our grades or minimum requirements to widen the pool as we've been talking about um, there are obviously other requirements that you'll need to meet on the application form um, and we score it as an overall so you have to meet a score overall so it's not a case of looking just at your grades and then thinking oh i'm not going to read any further we look at the whole thing mm -hmm. and and then we uh, it's assigned a score yeah. So that, yeah, for some AS partner firms, they're not as progressive as Shoesmiths. Um, I wish they were. Um, but some grade requirements are higher than others. Um, what I would say is, almost without exception, there were maybe one or two, I recognise that yeah, their life happens to people, whether it be at A-level or a degree, um, that's that. That's life, and and things crop up. You know, there are deaths, there are tragedies, there's illnesses, there's all sorts of mitigating circumstances that might impact somebody's academic performance. And we are now we have now have such a reputation in, with our partner firms that if an individual's grades are below their academic requirements, we can contact that firm and say, this person's grades are below your academic requirements, but we really think you should meet them because we've heard the story, we've spoken to them, we've got it, that relationship with them, nine times out of 10, they say send them along. So um, yes, some firms are more stringent on grades than others, um, but the firms that aren't so stringent are gonna be more likely to find those hidden gems that exist in various parts of the country. Um, and the fact that Shoesmith has got three C's as a minimum means you're more likely to find you know, those hidden gems potentially than, than other firms. Mm -hmm. Um, so, of course, that's not an invitation not to, to work hard in your degree and you still absolutely need to do the best for yourself um, and make sure that you're proud of the results that you, you come out of university with. Um, but it's not to say that somebody with lower grades couldn't have a career in law. Just, just try your best. My, my dad said that to me at every stage of, of my childhood, really, and up to now. Try your best. Leave every exam knowing you couldn't have prepared anymore. Put everything into your workshops, your seminars, because if you try your best, no one can ask any more of you than that. So if, you've, um, if you're watching this broadcast after the live um, broadcast, you can still ask questions. So you can just type them into the comments and Chris and I will jump on and answer those for you and we'll type an answer back to you. Um, so I've got one final question for you, Chris. I would like you to share with us a story about something that has been the best experience or a mind-blowing experience for you, or inspirational to you, since you've been working at AS? Um, there are so many. It's really, 
really difficult to identify one, um, but recently um, one of the best pieces of news that, or inspirational uh, story was an individual who came to this country as a refugee um, had experienced a remarkable, and in a negative way, um, life as a child, witnessed and endured some horrific experiences um, at the hands of others, um, came to this country without speaking any English, came on her own, um, taught herself English, went to uh, an amazing university and worked pretty much full time to support her and her sister and, and other siblings and got in touch with us having been mentored and coached by another amazing individual who I'm friends with. Um, long story short, that individual last year, um, or this year, um, secured uh, a training contract with a great law firm, I won't name them, um, but they achieved their dream and this was against all the odds. And if that person can achieve their dream uh, after enduring all of that and still having to deal with some of the emotional and psychological consequences of all of that, it gives me heart to know that everybody, if they set their mind to it, could achieve it because that was really um, a remarkable story that over and above many others actually, um, and it was something that happened over a period of time and she never lost sight of her goal. And I know this individual um, will be an amazing professional ambassador and she'll help hundreds of people in her career as a lawyer. Um, so that's, that's my probably inspirational. That's lovely. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, so I'd just like to say a massive thank you to Chris um, for joining me today on our Facebook Live video. It's been really good to chat to you and find out a little bit more about, about you and about aspiring solicitors for the benefit of our viewers. Um, if you've enjoyed watching, then just hit the love heart so we know um, to do more of this kind of thing. Um, and thank you for watching us today and do share this video with your friends and colleagues. Um, I think Chris has shared some really, really uh, useful information and insights into aspiring solicitors and why diversity is important in the legal sector and why there's still much more work to be done. So please do share this video. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that we are live again uh, tomorrow on Facebook Live and tomorrow I'm going to be joined by Rosie Waterson who is a aspiring solicitors member um, and she's also a future trainee um, for an international firm. She's going to be talking about more about diversity in law, but also we're going to be talking to her about um, how she has managed to raise her profile and personal brand using blogging and particularly on LinkedIn. So I know that she'll have some really good information to share with you if you also want to do the same. Um, and you, you know Rosie. Rosie's she's great. Um, and again, in terms of what she what she's done, um, I know that she's inspired thousands of people now which is fantastic and she uh, will continue to do that for the rest of her life I'm sure um, so I will hope to be uh, able to catch some of that Rosie and um, you know do shoot into that if you if you can because she'll be coming out with some great pearls of wisdom yeah so that's 4 p.m tomorrow um so thursday 18th of october that we're going to be live with rosie um so don't forget that our application form is open now for you to apply for an insight evening at shoe smiths and the deadline is the 30th of november so we're going to share the links for aspiring solicitors and for shoe smiths at the end of this video um and do share this video and thanks for watching thank you